It doesn't matter if you're a beginner, it doesn't matter if you don't have enough experience writing shader, you can at least do this and it will help. In today's episode, I'm going to show you a simple tip or technique that you can use to make your shaders more performant. For the tutorial, I will be using Visual Shader and Godot 4.3, but the concept can be applied universally. I'm Digvijay Sigohil and you're watching Shader Optimization Series. Alright, let's get started. Okay, I've created this curb shader a few months back. You can find the video link in the description and I am going to optimize this. Now there are two shader processors in Godot. Vertex processor and fragment processor. Vertex processor executes for each vertex and fragment processor executes for each pixel. Therefore, your goal as graphics programmer or technical artist should be to write your calculation in vertex processor rather than fragment processor, like as much as you can, or I should say as much as you can get away with. The reason is, vertex processor is generally going to be cheaper than the fragment processor and I'm saying generally because you might have a complex geometry far away in your scene that it only occupies 4 pixels but has 1000 vertices. At that point, fragment processor is going to be cheaper, but that's an extreme case. And also, you should be using proper LODs when creating level to not encounter that kind of stuff. Okay, that's all theory. Now let me show you how to actually do it. In the shader, I have these nodes, which are responsible for calculating the center offset for my quad. I will delete these nodes from here, go to vertex processor, and paste the nodes here. Now the question is, how can I pass this output back to my fragment processor? I can do that by creating a varying variable. To create it, click this manage varings, add varying, then this calculation is outputting vector2. So for my varying variable, I will select vector2 type, I will give a proper name, and this final drop down lets you define where you want to pass the data. Currently, I want to pass it from vertex processor to fragment processor, so this is all good. Hit create. Then I will create a varying setter node. Then I want to set the value for my center offset, so select it from the drop down. Take this output and feed it into center offset. Now in the fragment processor, to access the value I will create, you guessed it, varying getter node. Select center offset and use its output just like before. Now if I run the game, yep, everything is working just fine. And I made the shader slightly performant. Obviously it is super marginal that it will hardly impact the frame rate because my project is super simple so you just have to trust me on this one. Alright cool, but I cannot put every calculation in vertex processor. For example, see this lens distortion. These are the nodes responsible for that. Let me just move this logic to vertex shader. Create new varying variable. Create another varying setter node. Select my variable from the drop down and set the output. In the fragment processor, create varying getter node. Select my variable and use that. Let me run the game again and you can see that the distortion effect got really dialed down. The reason for that is vertex processor runs for each vertex. I only have 4 vertices so in the fragment processor for the pixels in between the vertices I would get interpolated values. So yes I still have a working effect but it's not what I really wanted. And that's why I've said you should use this as much as you can get away with because at the end of the day it is just a trade-off between quality and performance. And obviously you can't put everything into vertex processor because some of the variables are only available in fragment processor. For example the screen UV. I simply don't have access to screen UV in vertex processor. So that's that. And that's how you make your shaders more performant. It doesn't matter if you're a beginner, it doesn't matter if you don't have enough experience writing shader, you can at least do this and it will help. I would also like to point out that shader optimization or any optimization in general is hard. You should not be discouraged by that. Also you should subscribe for more videos like this. And if you want to know more tips about shader optimization, check out this video and I will see you there.